Thank you. We'll move to the other spectrum in education. There's a, a move out there to have early education included as part of basic ed. So would you talk about your um, stand on including early childhood education in the basic ed? And we'll start with you, Mr. Riccelli. We'll do one minute, no rebuttal on this one. Yeah, I definitely believe, you know, as the son of a second grade teacher and husband of a high school counselor, and I got a little two-year-old coming up, that we can do better. Uh, you know, we fought really hard in working for Senator Brown. I was happy to assist as her policy advisor to protect um, all day kindergarten for some of our most struggling schools. And we continue need to look at those types of things. We have to look at the continuum from early learning all the way through higher education to ensure that we're successful. And you know what? The Spokane Public Schools recently just came out with some new research uh, working with some community partners that showed that basically if we can identify those barriers early and early learners and put them on a right track, we'll improve our graduation rate in high school, which is critical and we, something that the business community and the education community and the whole community in general has been struggling with here in Spokane. Okay, Mr. Snyder. Well, early learning is crucial. I'm a father of two kids, an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old, and I've seen that trying to raise them up. But there's different ways to achieve that. It doesn't necessarily have to be public early learning. It can be private early learning. The importance is a commitment to early learning. You know, when we look at the entire sphere of education and we're figuring out how to fund it, we have to figure out a way to raise revenue without raising a backlash. I've done that at City Hall. We had an EMS levy where we went to the voters and said, here's the services we want to give you. Do you value this? Will you vote for it? And eventually we're going to have to do that on the state level. It's going to be a gut check time where we have to say, these are our priorities. Will you vote with us to fund them? Thank you. Mr. Apple. It's a big question. And there's a lot for the public to understand because this isn't just a question that you are going to hear me give you an answer to. Early learning is a department created by the state just a few years ago. It's one of the newest departments of the state. It try, it's trying to control a uh, child's education from toddler and infancy through to kindergarten, where it starts in our regular school system. I think we're not putting the emphasis where it should be, and that's K through 12. I think the dropout rate in high school is nothing that's got anything to do with early learning. I think that it's really a problem of keeping our children interested in staying in our regular schools. And I think we need to put the emphasis there. We've stripped too much money out of our budget to put it into early learning and that department. And because of that, we're suffering now in the higher, in higher education and in uh, K through 12. And I want that money restored. Okay, hey, thank you. Mr. Ben. I've been working with children for well over a decade. And when I went over to Olympia to advocate for those children and the people that give them services and places to be and learn, the dollars that are being spent at the state level, again, are not getting to the classroom. The problem we have is not the children, it's not the teachers, it is the administrative costs and the way we spend our money and allocate that money in ways that do not reach the children. I believe early learning is important. I've been doing it for a very long time. And I know that children, many of them, reach the classroom ready to learn, but the K through 12 system does not serve them well. And I've read all the research that backs that up. Okay, thank you. Mr. Euler? Yes, I believe early learning is crucial in closing the achievement gap that we see uh, across the state, and especially here in the third district. Uh, I've worked with kids in foster care, uh, mostly teenaged kids, uh, and by that point, they've already fallen through the cracks in the system. And anyone who works in that field will tell you that you can identify those kids, uh, you can spot uh, the future trends early on uh, when they're five, six, and seven years old. And so I do believe that uh, teaching kids how to learn at an early age is really crucial. Uh, what else we can do is strengthen families. A lot of the kids that do fall through the cracks come from broken homes, homes with drug and alcohol issues, with domestic violence, with abuse. And if we can create strong families and strong communities uh, that support these kids starting at a very early age, that we can, that that benefits everybody.